Greetings to all our learners. Welcome to CEC lecture. Dear learners, the topic that we'll be analyzing is maritime security, new horizons in global realms. In the lecture, we will try to understand the dynamics of maritime security, analyze how maritime security is an important area and issue in international relations. We shall try to focus on maritime security with reference to international security, how maritime security has an important stake for international trade, looking at dynamics of shipping and its related concerns like blue economy for global relations and national development of nations. Maritime security, when we look at it from the traditional lens, it's about naval strategy regarding the protection of national maritime borders and sensitive maritime trade points. Then when we try to understand the changing context of global relations, there has been emergence of various issues related to maritime domain. The international security studies has now realized the need to have this field as a new subdivision. The maritime domain presents an analysis of its global importance, looking at many of shore-based threats, trying to look at their impact on the onshore environment. And then when we look at the impact, what we find here is that the study of maritime security, when we go by the works that have been done, it is multidisciplinary interdisciplinary with references from political science, law, international law, economy, sociology, industry amongst others. And then when we take the study forward, we now first take reference to a very important work that has been done by Christian Beauger and Timothy Edmonds named Beyond Sea Bindness a new agenda for maritime security studies. This work is from International Affairs, November 2017. Maritime environment, as the authors present, that there is a need to understand it as a part of the interlinked security complex. For the realists, when we look at the world of seas, it was about power. For the liberals, when we look at the idea of security of seas, this somewhere became the basis. For example, the idea of cooperation that liberals talk about, this becomes the basis for various international regimes governing activities at sea. The 1988 report, wherein we take reference to this work by Christian Beauger and Timothy Edmonds, 1988 report of the Independent World Commission on the Oceans also pointed out that there is a range of military and non-military threats to international order at the sea. Then when we look at global alliances, today how continents across are working on maritime security and strategy. Example, NATO's Alliance for Maritime Security, 2011, UK National Strategy for Maritime Security 2014, EU's Maritime Security Strategy 2014, G7 Declaration on Maritime Security 2015. So what you see here is that the important perspective offered by the authors in the work is that one ha also has to look at factors for organizing maritime security and managing the complexity, namely looking at joint knowledge production and adequate coordination to tackle the same. Dear learners, another important perspective on the framework for further research, we once again take reference to the work of Professor Christian Beauger talking about converging frameworks. And there are three such frameworks that we can enlist that researchers, academicians, practitioners in maritime security can take reference for research. Matrix framework incorporating concepts of marine safety, sea power, blue economy. Securitization framework examining the interrelationship between 
maritime threats and divergent political interests. Security practice theory examining the true intentions and actions of actors involved in maritime security arena. Do refer to this very important work by Christian Berger talk entitled that is what is maritime security in the year 2015. So therefore what we see that maritime security has emerged as an important significant concerns for not only for international maritime community but also for global realms. Today there is more academic and policy research on it. When we look at maritime transport there are tons of goods that are moved globally. Globalization of trade played an important role also in getting the global world's attention towards maritime security. Ocean carriers being at all ports in nearly every country. So therefore with this rise of commercialization, globalization, there were commercial maritime interests as well as threats which could not be ignored namely pi piracy, maritime terrorism, complex nature and international scope of security issues and therefore there was a need looking at these challenges for improved maritime security strategies to enable the viability of commercial trade and also ensure safety of the ports and coastal areas for respective nations. There has to be a distinction between maritime safety and maritime security. Maritime security is a broad term whereas when we are looking at safety we are looking delimiting it to a very narrow idea. When we are analyzing maritime security we are not just looking at one single entity of safety but array of several maritime concerns. Some of them are port security, safety of sailors, protection against piracy, piracy at sea, cyber security of onboard ships amongst others. Once again taking reference to the important work by Professor Biosher that is maritime security has four areas of concern. Firstly national security, second human security, third marine environment and fourth economic environment. So therefore when we see that how the idea of shipping was, no, was nothing new, it existed even in ancient times. For example, shipping on seas and oceans, shipping at the time of piracy, looking at most important perspectives of the Cold War, that is how in the post Cold War era there was resurgence of modern maritime piracy and looking at these changes maritime security is a global concern today. There are distinct levels of analysis in IR and to elaborate further that how maritime security is important today we take reference to this work by Alan Caffroni, Class, State and World System, The Transformation of International Maritime Relations and this is from Review of International Political Economy 1995. That is the author is trying to make us understand that how there are distinct levels of analysis in IR. For the realist and neorealist it is the state that is the most important actor in power relations. With evolution of international shipping with dynamics changing the global structures are no longer isolated and within this are the opportunities and constraints also of the global international system and therefore we see that there is a transformation of international maritime relations as well. When we try to understand maritime security it is also essential to have a look at the institutional support, institutional governance that is there with it. The International Maritime Organization is United Nations Specialized Agency with responsibility for the safety and security of shipping and prevention of marine and atmospheric pollutions by ship. IMO intends to support the work of 
United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. It is instrumental in getting global standard and it is the authority to ensure that there are standards for safety, security, environmental performance of international shipping. It attempts to create a regulatory framework for the shipping industry that is fair and effective, universally accepted and implemented. It attempts to create a level playing field for all the stakeholders. So therefore, what we see that shipping, when it is an international industry, no doubt it is going to have ramifications for respective nation states also. Thereby, thereby there is a need for regulations and standards that are agreed, adopted and implemented on an international basis. The International Maritime Organization is the forum for it. International shipping projects today when we look at it accounts for nearly 80% of global trade to peoples and community. Shipping as lot, uh, the argument goes it has been seen as cost effective method of international cooperation. It facilitates co commerce, prosperity amongst nations and people. So therefore, IMO measures in this regard covers all aspects of international shipping, ship design, construction, equipment amongst others. So here in also what we see here is that IMO's work is having a very important bearing for regulation of the industry. The IMO also works for 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development and Associated Sustainable Development Goals. Because see, SDGs need sustainable transport sector supporting world trade and facilitating global economy. So thereby, IMO is playing a very important role for not only 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, but by looking at areas like energy efficiency, new technology and innovation, maritime education, training, maritime traffic management, maritime infrastructure, maritime security and its related concerns therefore definitely acquire an important stake in global relations then. Dear learners, when we are looking at maritime security, the freedom of the seas doctrine that was put in the 17th century, limiting the national jurisdiction over the oceans to a narrow sea belt surrounding to a nation's coastline. This idea of laws of the freedom of the sea was somewhere challenge because later complexity arose and thereby this balancing of the sea and the global relations namely when we look at the coastal fish stock, long distance fishing fleets, threats of pollution, waste from transport vessels, oil tankers amongst others. So what we find here is that in the governance, international governance for maritime issues the United Nations had its first conference on the law of the seas that was in 1956. This resulted in a 1958 convention. The final conference held in Jamaica in 1982 resulted in the 1982 law of the sea convention. The law of the sea convention came into force in 1994 upon receiving the necessary uh, signatures of UN securities. The law of the sea is a body of customs, treaties, international governments by which governments maintain order, productivity, peaceful relations on the sea. The law of the sea convention defines the rights and responsibilities of nation with respect to their use of their world's ocean, establishing guidelines for business, the environment and the management of marine natural resources. To add to that, there has been collaborative attempts also when we look at it, how United Nations Environment Program with its regional seas program protects oceans and seas 
for promoting sustainable use of marine resources. UNEP also created the Global Program of Action for Protection of Marine Environment from land-based activities. It's an intergovernmental mechanism and one can read more about it at the reference link given here, un.org. So what you see here is that today when we're looking at maritime security, it has concerns not only just for the economic perspective, but also related to the environment perspective. Because when two-thirds of the world ocean is beyond national jurisdiction. In that case, the marine life in global ocean commons is facing threats like overexploitation, pollution, seabed mining, uh, climate change, ecological changes and the world needs a strong conservation focus legally binding treaty to govern the high seas. This is an important remark that we take from the uh, work of Laurent Kubayak of Natural Resources Defense Council at IUCN and it's all out here just to elaborate further on the point that how maritime security has an important bearing now for management of global commons and the related perspective of biodiversity preservation. Today maritime security is an important aspect for nations to factor in their global realms also. Let's take an example at how India uh, in the recently 15 CII Exim Bank digital conclave on India Africa project partnership wherein its point it has pointed out that uh, that how defense and security would be key pillar of the India Africa partnership and herein maritime security would be a new frontier. Another example that when we see that how India and Indonesia, which are Asia's largest democracy, major actors in the Asian century, Indonesia has world's uh, fourth largest population and a highly strategic geolocation, while India has second largest population and it's one of the most developed regional, has one of the most developed regional navy in the Indian Ocean. So therefore, as we understand it, how maritime security has a bearing, important bearing for global relations, we take reference to the remarks made by Indian Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji during Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji's 2018 visit to Indonesia, the relationship between the countries was elevated to comprehensive strategic partnership with shared vision of India, Indonesia, maritime cooperation in the Indo-Pacific as a component. So this shows that how today maritime security has an important bearing on bilateral, multilateral as well as global relations. When we are discussing maritime security, the norms also play a very important role. And in the aspect of norms, the World Maritime Day focuses on the importance of shipping safety, maritime security, marine environment, emphasizing and updating on IMO's work, marks the contribution of international maritime industries towards the economy of the world, especially shipping. The World Maritime Day was observed for the first time on 17th March 1978. The day is observed to mark when IMO convention entered into force in the year 1958. The World Maritime Day is celebrated in many countries, Australia, Canada, UK, United States amongst others. And when we look at that, how over the years, the theme of World Maritime Day presents an important message. World Maritime Day theme for 2019 was empowering women in the maritime community. The theme for 2020 World Maritime Day is sustainable shipping for a sustainable planet. So what we find here is that how today the industry has not only grown in size, but also striking chord for issues like gender equality, sustainability in the ambit of global relations. An important 
association that has also a bearing on how solidarity for concerns of global relations as well as for maritime security has been factored in together the indian ocean rim association is an intergovernmental organization that was established on 7th march 1997 now when we visit the website of iora.int there's a very important statement that is how the vision for iora originated during the visit by the late president nelson mandela of south africa to india in 1995 related with the activities of iora today the world has seen emergence of blue economy as an important aspect of not only their national policies but for global realms also the blue economy focuses on the untapped seabed resources renewable ocean energy strategic location potentials as maritime powers they are having advantages both for the security of the region and also for the economy it attempts to promote sustainable and inclusive growth employment opportunities within the indian oceans regions maritime economic activities to know more about the blue economy once again we take reference to the remarks at iora.int that is to initiate appropriate programs in order to work out mechanisms for having sustainable harnessing of the ocean resources research development stock assessment of marine resources marine aquaculture deep uh, sea fishing biotechnology amongst others so again when we are seeing that maritime security today has acquired a definite say and stake in global relations one can also look at the areas and challenges wherein nations have to work at their respective national policy level and also for collect with collective solidarity for development of new horizons and of security in the marine realms example digitalization of shipping need to cut greenhouse gas emissions need to reduce marine waste sulfur in ship oil improving efficiency of shipping and above all enhancing women participation in the maritime community an important work that we take reference to that is by malcolm d evans and sofia galani uh, edited maritime security and the law of the sea help or hindrance this is from edward elgar publishing 2020 and here in the authors make point towards a challenge that when we look at united nations convention on the law of the sea there are challenges to ocean security increasing activities of the state the non state actors new maritime security threats posed by non state actors piracy illegal fishing states have to reconsider their understanding of marine security because of modern challenges robotics revolution blue economy amongst others so therefore dear learners when we look at maritime security from a narrow perspective it has really come forward in a big way today nations have to work out mechanisms to factor in maritime security as a pillar strong pillar to base their diplomacy maritime security is related to avenues of economic progress and economic development for respective nation states and thereby there are new horizons also right from robotics digitization of ships blue economy which have a twin link both with security namely from the international security point of view and the economic progress both at national and global realms for respective nation states so dear learners we hope that the lecture on maritime security and rising realms in global areas rising concerns in global areas related to maritime security how they need to be understood how the challenges have to be translated into solutions to factor in better gains from the national and global actions thank you for being with us for the lecture on maritime security and new realms in global 
arena. Thank you.